Hello everybody and welcome to this really quick tutorial on blend shapes. So today what we're going to be doing is running through a really quick example of how to set up blend shapes and get them into Stingray. And then I'm just going to give you a little uh, demonstration of how they can be used on something more complicated. To start we're going to work with this very simple uh, animation and we're just going to make a ball that bounces. And as you can see this ball has some different properties than what you would normally have with a traditional animation where you were just keyframing it. As you can see the ball is smushing towards the bottom, kind of stretching towards the middle and getting to normal size at the top. Okay, now this would normally be not something that would be very easy to bring into a game engine, but with Stingray it's pretty easy. So I'm going to show you the process for setting this up and making it work. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so that's a blend shape, and let's start with a brand new project. So we're just going to go File, and we're going to go New Scene. Now this is in Maya LT, uh, but this would work fine in Maya or Max. Okay, so just so you're aware, you can do this with any of the tools. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and create a cube. And once the cube is on screen, we're just going to subdivide it. So we're going to go mesh and smooth, and we're just going to put it up to like, I don't know, three subdivisions. Okay, that'll make it into a nice little ball, and we've now got our, our little ball shape. Okay, so now all we have to do is duplicate it. So we're going to go Shift D and Shift D. So now we've got two duplications of the ball. And over here in my um, outliner, I'm going to go ahead and just name them. So I'm going to call this one Ball. I'm going to call the first one Smush. And the second one Stretch. Okay, so we've got the ball, we've got Smush, and we've got Stretch. All right, so let's just go ahead and grab the Stretch, and let's put that on the right. So I'm going to set this to uh, X location of 2, and I'm going to grab Smush, and I'm going to make the Smush a negative 2, okay? So I've got the ball on the center, I've got stretch, I'm sorry, smush on the left and stretch on the right. Okay, now that we have our balls all created, let's go ahead and deform them. All right, so let's grab this one on the left, right click, hit face mode, select the ball, and let's go ahead and smush it. So we're just going to scale it down and we're going to scale it out a little bit. Okay, so it's a little wider and a little smushed, you know, like flattened. All right, so now that that one's done, let's grab the one on the right, right click, face, select all, and squeeze it in a little bit, and let's make it a little taller, okay? So now we've got the stretched out ball, the flattened ball, and the main ball, okay? So right click, object, and now we can kind of set up our blend shape itself. Now, to do this, um, I actually like to work with tabs. So I create my tabs and I, I kind of add things to my tabs. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So we're just going to go ahead and delete this shelf. And I'm going to show you how to create your own shelf. So I'm going to go New Shelf. And we're going to call this uh, Blend Shape. Okay? And hit OK. And now we've got a blank sh shelf to go ahead and add uh, icons to. So what we're going to do is go into Windows, Animation, and Shape Editor. Control, Shift, and Click. We'll add that to your shelf. Now we want to go into the Deform list and go Control, Shift, and select the options, the square part of the blend shapes. Okay? And you can also add these, but they're not nearly as important. So you can go ahead and in Blend Shapes, you can go Add, Remove, Swap, Bake, and Normalization. You can also do it on the paint weights. And that'll be all the tools relative to your blend shapes, okay? So uh, now that you're kind of on the same page as I am, let's go ahead and create our first blend shape. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select the ball on the left, we're gonna hold down shift, select the ball on the right, and lastly, grab the ball to be affected, okay? Now that's important because you, it has to be in that order. It doesn't have to necessarily be left and right, but the last ball must be the one that you want to actually animate. Okay, so once you do that, we're going to grab this uh, little icon over here that's the blend shape options, and we're going to name it. We'll call it uh, Ball Bounce, and we can go ahead and hit Apply and Close. Now, if we hit this um, Manage Shapes button, we're going to see that we have this Ball Bounce. We have two sliders for Smush and Stretch, okay, and if we move the smush it'll smush and if we move the stretch it'll stretch okay so that is a complete blend shape 
but we want to put it to a little more use than that because one of the beautiful things about blend shapes is that they can work in tandem with animation. So let's go ahead and do a quick simple animation and let's make our ball bounce, stretch, and smush all in one motion, okay? So let's grab our ball, let's grab the move tool, let's go to animation tab and create our first keyframe, okay? So now that we have our keyframe created, let's move out to the 30 mark, so 30 frames. Let's move the ball way up in the air. Something like that is nice. And create another keyframe. So let's go ahead and go to the first frame, copy, and go to the 60th frame and go paste and paste. Okay, and that'll make a complete cycle. So now we have a looped animation. If we hit the play button, we should find that the ball goes up and down and up and down. Okay, but it doesn't have a whole lot of life. And that's where these blend shapes are gonna come in. All right, so let's go back to frame one. Let's set our smush to 100% uh, smushed or one. And we're gonna go ahead and create a keyframe. We should also create a keyframe for stretch at this time. Okay, so we also have a keyframe now on stretch. Okay, let's go out to about frame 10. I don't even know if 10 is good. I think five is probably good. Let's create a keyframe and a keyframe. Let's make smush down to zero and keyframe that again. Okay, so now we should find that the ball is kind of smushing and stretching at the same time here. We're not really stretching, it's just unsmushing. Okay, and now what we wanna do is get to a fully stretched movement at about 15 frames, okay? So at 15 frames, let's go ahead and make our stretch 100%. And that should be pretty cool. And now at 30 frames, we're gonna be kind of losing motion, okay? So what we're gonna to wanna to do is reduce that stretch down to zero and key it, okay? So let's check out how that looks. So we have a little stretch, so it smushes, stretches, and unstretches, okay? Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is the same thing in reverse. So it's gonna be getting to a, about 45 frames full stretch. So let's go ahead and stretch it out at 100% right there. And let's get to about five frames before it hits the ground. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and undo our stretch and key it. Smush uh, is gonna be also needing a key. So we're gonna leave that at zero and, and um, give it a key. And now at the 60th frame, we're gonna go ahead and increase our smush to 100% and key it. All right, and let's see how that looks. So hit play. And we've got a little stretch, we got a smush, we got a stretch, we got a smush. The ball has just become a lot more alive, okay? But one thing you might notice is that stretch isn't really that, I don't know, exaggerated. You might wanna make it a little more exaggerated. So another really nice thing about blend shapes is that you can actually edit them post-production, uh, post okay? So let's get to about 15 frames where it's stretched out the most. Let's grab our stretch object, let's go face, select all those faces and scale it up a touch. Okay, and as you can see, it's stretching both of them at the same time. Okay, so that's really cool. And we're gonna go object mode and we should be in pretty good shape now. I don't think we're gonna to wanna to exaggerate it much more than that. All right, so there we have it. Now you can edit this to your heart's delight, make this perfect, but this is just a quick example, so I don't wanna to go too nuts, but that should give you the full understanding of how to create a blend shape in Maya LT. And again, you can do this in Maya, you can do this in Max, you can do this in any of the tools. Uh, this is just a quick tutorial on how to get this built. All right, so let's uh, stop our animation and get ready to export. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and save our, our hard work here. Okay, so let's go File, Save Scene As, and I'm gonna put it in your little uh, download samples pack under Goodies, Models, Ball, and I'm gonna call this Bouncy Ball. And I'm gonna save that as a MyLT file. Okay, now that our project is saved, let's go ahead and delete the object on the left. Let's delete the object on the right. Let's just scrub our animation to make sure that everything is still intact. And let's go ahead and now get ready for export. So we're gonna go File, Game Exporter, and we can now create our animation clip, okay? So not under Model, but under Animation Clips, what you're gonna to wanna to do is hit this plus button, 
okay? And when you do so, it's gonna grab the entirety of your time frame, okay? And that's what we want, okay? And we're just gonna call this bouncing fall, okay? And now we just have to choose the path. So let's go ahead and choose our path. I'm gonna choose the same one that I just chose. So I'm gonna go desktop, blend shapes, goodies, models, and ball. And I'm gonna say choose, okay? And we're gonna call this bouncing ball, or bouncy ball, I think I called it before, bouncy ball. And we can go ahead and now hit export. But before we do that, we wanna go into our settings and say, save clips to a single file, okay? And that'll just ensure that everything is all wrapped up in one nice neat bundle, all right? And we can go ahead and hit export now. Once it says export successful, we can close this. And we should probably save another copy so that we don't overwrite our original. Let's call this bouncy ball animated. Okay, so we have one of the original that has the two pieces on the sides and we now have one without it, all right? So that should do everything that we need. Okay, so now that that's all exported and everything is done, we can go ahead and close down Maya and we can go ahead and launch up our Stingray. All right, so start, Stingray, go ahead and launch it. And now what we're gonna wanna do is create our project. So let's go into templates. Let's grab our basic template and hit create. So let's go ahead and call this blend shapes. Now let's just go ahead and create the directory where it's gonna be stored. And for me, I'm gonna put this back into the desktop, blend shapes. I'm uh, gonna go into project. We can just select that folder and we can hit create. That's gonna go ahead and create a brand new project for us. And once loaded, we should be in a scene that looks just like this. Now, let's go ahead and delete this box. Go into content, models, right click, create folder. We're gonna call this bouncy ball. Open up bouncy ball, go import, desktop, blend shapes tutorial, goodies, models, ball, bouncyball.fbx. And in the dialog box, the only thing that we're gonna to wanna to make sure of is that this animation is selected and that it's gonna go ahead and create everything. We also just wanna double check that the blend shapes uh, is actually uh, set to being imported, okay? Then let's just go import. And we should see that we get all of the pieces that we just created. We have the unit, right here, which is just the ball. We have our blend shapes complete with sliders and we can see that they're working. We can do the stretch and see that that's working. And we can even see if they work together and they do. Okay, so everything is working great. And we can check our animation to see if it's actually doing its job. And it is, all right? So everything is working as expected. So let's go ahead and grab our ball and put it on screen. And we can set this to zero. Oops, zero, zero, zero. And let's just raise it up a touch. And let's go ahead and jump into the unit itself. Go into unit flow, right click, animation, play animation clip, select, bouncy ball animation right click event on unit spawned and just connect the out from unit spawned into the play on the animation clip okay and this should go ahead and get everything working beautifully let's close this down and let's try to play it and voila there we have a bouncing ball in Stingray using blend shapes. Now another really cool thing about blend shapes is that as you saw before we have sliders that are relative to the stretch and the smush. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to put some of that to use with a more complex character uh, but now that you understand the basics of how to do blend shapes, I can kind of show you something a little more elaborate without having to show you all the details in between, because to show you a full character rig would be extremely difficult. But I can show you how to drive some of these values 
uh, with Flow, all right? So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I went ahead and imported the Sven model, and the Sven model is included in the goodies folder, as well as this project. So if you wanna see how I've done some of the things I've done here, you're welcome to go ahead and uh, open up the project and take a look. Uh, but what I basically did was I made two actions, one on click and one on pressing the number one. When you click, it'll either open the mouth or close the mouth. With the one button, it's gonna slowly open his mouth and, um, and raise his eyebrows, just to show that you can blend two different animations uh, with, um, with these values. So uh, basically what I've got is, you know, jaw, lips open, animating so as you can see right there his mouth is opening here on the right uh, we're opening the mouth and closing the mouth by sliding this and uh, basically I'll just be driving some of these values with some flow so let's go ahead and take a look at that flow really quick so I'll go into the flow editor and just very simply what I've done is I've got on the mouse button I am going to either open the lips or close the lips. Uh, as you can see, I'm driving the weight of one or the weight of zero. And at its simplest form, that's all we really have to do is drive this weight value from zero to one, okay? Uh, and here we're just doing it instantly. So it's either gonna be closed or it's gonna be open, depending on uh, which click it is. So every time we click, it's gonna go you know, on the top or the bottom from the top, okay? And on the one key press, what I'm doing is I'm just basically making a simple loop that which will slowly open his mouth over time at the same time as you know moving his eyebrows um, upward okay so i've got the the right eyebrow moving up the uh, left eyebrow moving up and the jaw opening all from the same driven value okay so i'm just increasing the value over time and then once it hits one it stops the loop okay so very very simple and again you can um, open the project in the uh, goodies folder if you want to see exactly how this was built. I also included the basic form of this loop in the flow code, okay? So you do have that as well. Okay, so if we were to go ahead and hit play on this, let's just see how that functionality works out. By clicking, I get the mouth to open and to close. So that's just immediately pushing a value to one or zero. And if I hit one, we can see that we're driving multiple keys all at the same time. Okay, so one again, and you can see that all those are moving at the same time. The eyebrows are lifting up as well as the mouth is opening. All right, so uh, I just wanted to give you a quick show of what this can be used for and how you can put it to use and that you can drive those keys with flow itself. All right, so um, that's gonna conclude this tutorial and I hope you found it very useful. Uh, Please do enjoy playing with blend shapes and check out the project and I will see you in the next tutorial.